Okay, the next topic is other endocrine glands. So the first one we have in here is the pineal gland. The pineal gland releases a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin is going to help us with the circadian rhythm, which basically establishes the 24 hours of a day that tell us, you know, time to sleep and time to be awake. Uh, most everybody agrees that that's the function of the pineal gland. So if we keep scrolling down. We have the thymus. The thymus is a gland that is going to produce thymosin. Thymosin is necessary for the T cells. The T cells go to the thymus in order to mature. And the hormone that is produced by the thymus to attract these cells is going to be thymosin. And the thymus is located on top of the heart below the thyroid gland. This is a thymus right here. And it's huge, big in the case of kids, but then it's going to degenerate and it's not going to be that big when we are adults, as you can see in this other figure right here. So we keep scrolling down. And the next one that we're going to have is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is immediately below your larynx, which is this one, right? It has two lobes right here. Okay, it's connected by an isthmus, which is this part. A cut of the thyroid is going to show you that it has this particular characteristic. Right here, you have this area, which is going to be a colloid. In this colloid, you're going to have a whole bunch of iodine. Iodine is necessary in order to form T3 and T4, which are the hormones produced by the thyroid gland. These hormones are going to be in this sort of lake. And these are going to be created by these cells in dark called the follicular cells that you see right here. In addition to that, the thyroid gland also produces another hormone called calcitonin. Calcitonin is going to help us reduce the levels of calcium in blood. And these are produced by these cells that you find in between these lakes. You see these ones right here? These ones are going to be called the parafollicular cells and they produce calcitonin. As you know, the thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones and the thyroid hormone is going to help us with the speed at which our metabolism is going to work. In other words, how fast or how slow your body is going to produce the different chemical reactions in your body necessary for you to be in homeostasis. Okay, we keep scrolling down. We have in there the thyroid hormones, as I was saying, T3 and T4. It shows a calorigenic effect, obviously, because it increases your metabolism, for example. And when you do that, as a result, you're going to consume more oxygen, as you can see right here. And obviously, you're going to be hungry and it's going to stimulate alertness and quick reflexes, etc., etc., so we can actually maintain our hemostasis. The next hormone is the parathyroid glands. Para means next, so that means that these glands are next to the thyroid. And as you can see here, this is your thyroid gland. And next to them, you're going to find right here, these four, this one and this one, those are going to be the parathyroid glands. They produce, as you can see right here, parathyroid hormone. The job of the parathyroid hormone is to increase the levels of calcium in blood. The next one is the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, as you can see here, are going to have two main areas. The cortex, as you can see right here, and the medulla. In addition to that, you're going to have a capsule. So looking at this with more detail, you can see here that the cortex has three areas. They're going to be called zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculara, and zona reticularis. And after that, you're going to have the medulla. So we have a cortex and a medulla, and the cortex has three areas. In all these areas, glomerulosa, fasciculara, and reticularis, you're going to produce hormones. In addition to that, produce also hormones in the adrenal medulla. So how many hormones are produced by the adrenal gland? Four different hormones in each one of these areas. So if we keep scrolling down, we have the adrenal medulla. In the adrenal medulla, we're going to produce epinephrine, norepinephrine, and a little bit of dopamine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are mainly for the fight or flight type of reaction that we get, for example, when we're going to have physical activity, for example. So we're going to increase our heart rate, respiratory rate, and in order to do those things, we need to use a lot of energy. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of use of glucose, for example, in order to maintain this fight or flight type of action that we need to have. Okay, the next area is the adrenal cortex, where we said we have three different zonas, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculara, and zona reticularis, and each one of these areas that we are going to produce different hormones. The zona glomerulosa produces mineralocorticoids, as you can see right here. Zona fasciculara is going to produce glucocorticoids, such as cortisol and androgens, and the zona reticularis is the same thing, as you can see right here, glucocorticoids and androgens. Mineralocorticoids produced by zona glomerulosa, an example of it is going to be aldosterone, as you can see right here. Aldosterone is a very important part of the renin aldosterone angiotensin mechanism. That's the one that we use in order to increase blood pressure that starts in the kidneys. Aldosterone is going to help us reabsorb sodium, and when we reabsorb sodium, we reabsorb water, and increased levels of water in your blood will help you increase the blood pressure. If we scroll down, main or the most important glucocorticoid is going to be cortisol. Cortisol is a very important anti inflammatory. And in addition to that, cortisol is going to increase the levels of glucose in blood, as you can see right here. Cortisol is released in response of the secretion of ACTH. ACTH is released by the pituitary gland. In addition to that, uh, we are going to produce also 
androgens. The androgens that the adrenal gland is going to release is this one, dehydroepiandosterone, DHEA. DHEA is processed by other structure, by other organs in our body in order to transform it into testosterone, for example. But this is very important for the fetus when the fetus is growing inside the uterus because this, for example, is what stimulates the testicles to go down into the scrotum. Same thing happens with estradiol, which is produced by the adrenal gland in very small quantities. And again, it lacks any of their effect when the female grows because eventually the function of releasing estradiol is going to be taken over by the ovaries when the female reaches puberty. The next one that we have is the pancreatic islets. The pancreas have two main jobs. One of them is the production of hormones, which is right here in the pancreatic islets, and the digestive enzymes, which are by the endocrine assignments that you see right here. So the endocrine assignments is for the digestive system, so we are not going to cover that. We have a, a graphical representation of the pancreatic islet right here, and you can see in there that there are three main kinds of cells, beta cells, alpha cells, and delta cells. Beta cells are going to produce insulin. Alpha cells are going to produce glucagon, and delta cells are going to produce somatostatin. Alpha cells produce glucagon, as I said, and glucagon is going to increase the glucose levels in blood. Insulin decreases the levels of glucose in blood, and somatostatin is going to inhibit the secretion of acid from your stomach. If we keep scrolling down, the next topic we have is the gonads, which are going to be the ovaries and the testicles. As you know, the testicles produce testosterone, and the ovaries, estrogen, in the case of the ovule, take a cell produce endosterone and granulosa cell transform that into estrogen. In the case of the testicles, the testicles are going to produce testosterone and that's going to be produced by the Leydig cells or interstitial cells as you can see right here. In the testicles obviously there are going to be certainly cells which are going to be the sustentacular cells. So what other organs or tissues we have that are part of the endocrine system because they secrete some sort of hormone? That be the skin, which is part of the production of cholecalcitriol, which eventually is going to turn into vitamin D. The liver also participates in the production of cholecalcitriol, but the liver also produces angiotensinogen, which is an important component of the angi uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. It also produces IGF. Remember, we said the growth hormone only lasts 5 to 10 minutes. Kidneys, obviously, because they're going to release renin, and also it's part of the formation of vitamin D. The heart produces atrial natriuretic peptide to release blood pressure. The stomach produces a certain hormones, such as cholecystokinin, right, which is going to stimulate the release of bile from the gallbladder, as you can see right here. Gastrin is also produced by the stomach upon the receive of food from your stomach, and therefore your stomach releases acid. Peptide YY is very important in the sense that it signals the information that we are already full. Adipose tissue produces leptin. It's also very important because this one is going to tell you whether you, you have appetite or not. In other words, if you have low levels of leptin, we have other structures such as, you know, the osseous tissue which secretes osteocalcin and the placenta. Remember, placenta is very important because it produces an additional hormone, which is the goranotropic chorionic hormone. Okay, now you have a very nice table in here where you have a summary of all the hormones and the functions that they have. And I would strongly recommend you to pay attention to this table and learn this table if you don't want to read what we have covered so far in this chapter regarding these hormones because it's already summarizing here and that's about it.